husband, nor the slave returned, that in such haste I sent to seek his master. <laughs> sure, Luciana, it is two o'clock. <laughs> oh, perhaps some merchant hath invited him, and from the Marty's somewhere gone to dinner. Oh, good sister, let us dine and never fret. Our man is master of his liberty. Time is their master, and when they see time, they'll go or come. And so be patient, sister. Why should their liberty than ours be more? Because their business still lies out of door. Look! <laughs> when I serve him so, he takes it ill. Oh no, he is the bridle of your will. There's none but asses will be bridled so. Why, headstrong liberty is lashed with woe. <laughs> There's nothing situate under heaven's eye but hath its bound in earth, in sea, in sky. The beasts, the fishes, and the winged fowls are their male subjects and at their control. Man, more divine, the master of all these, lord of the wide world and wild watery seas, endued with intellectual sense and soul, of more preeminence than fish and fowls, are masters to their females and their lords. Then let your will attend on their accord. This servitude makes you to keep unwed. Oh, not this, but troubles of the marriage bed. But were you wedded? You would bear some sway. Oh, ere I learn, love, I'll practice to obey. How is your husband? she falls. They can be meek that have no other cause. A wretched soul, bruised with adversity, we bid be quiet when we hear it cry. But were we burdened with like weight of pain, as much or more we should ourselves complain. So thou that hast no unkind mate to grieve thee, with urging helpless patience would relieve me. But if thou live to see like rights bereft, this fool begged patience in thee will be left. Oh, no! Well, <laughs> well I will marry one day but to try. Oh, who the man now is yours tonight? Say, is your tardy master now at hand? Is your tardy master now at hand? <laughs> Nay, he's a two hands with me, and that my two ears can witness. Say, didst thou speak with him? Didst thou speak with him? <laughs> Knowest thou his mind? Aye, he told his mind unto mine ear. Be true his hand, I scarce could understand it. Oh, he spake he so doubtfully thou could not feel his meaning. Nay, he struck so plainly I could too well feel his blows, and withal so doubtfully that I could scarce understand them. But say, I prithee. I prithee. <laughs> Thanks. Is he coming home? It seems he hath great care to please his wife. Why, mistress, sure my master is horn mad. Horn mad? Thou villain! Oh, I mean not cuckold mad, but sure he is stark mad. When I desired him to come home to dinner, he asked me for a thousand marks in gold. Tis dinner time, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Your meat will burn, quoth I. My gold, quoth he, will you come, quoth I. My gold, quoth he, where's the thousand marks I gave thee, villain? The pig, quoth I, is burned. My gold, quoth he. My mistress, sir, quoth I. Hang up thy mistress, out on thy mistress. I know not thy mistress. How van, Megillah, how? Oh, oh, oh. Quoth my master, I know, quoth he. No house, no wife, no mistress, no way. So. <laughs> With my errand due unto my tongue, I thank him. I bear home upon my shoulder, for in conclusion he did beat me there. <laughs> you couldn't wear the patent leather, huh? <laughs> oh, go back again, thou slave, and fetch him home. Go back again and be you beaten home? For God's sake, send some other messenger. Back, slave, or I will break thy page across. <laughs> And he will bless that cross with other beatings. Between you, I shall have a holy head. Hence-bracing peasant! Yeah. Oh, no! And they're off! Fetch thy master home. 
Am I so round with you as you with me that like a football you do spurn me thus? <laughs> you spurn me, Henson. You will spurn me hither. If I last in this service, you must case me in leather. Uh -huh. 